I thank God for Brother Lee Stone King. He has been much in our prayers. God spared him. God raised him up. God healed him. And he's going to preach like he's never preached before. Everybody say, Brother Stone King, we love you. Preach to us. Thank you, Brother Tinney. Praise the Lord, everyone. God bless you wonderful people. Turn to your neighbors, shake their hand, and say, God bless you. Look back at them and say, you truly are a wonderful person. I want to personally thank you for all the prayers you have prayed for me, for all the finances you have given. There is no doubt but what your prayers help me to recover from the tremendous trauma that I have been through. I want you to lift your hands for just a moment and let your voice out and worship the Lord. Would you do that all over this tabernacle tonight? Jesus, I worship you because you are God. There is a verse of scripture that has meant a great deal to me in the last five months. It's found in Psalm 118, verse 17. David wrote and said, I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Psalm 105, one says, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. In other words, tell it and retell it and tell it again. Many people will be miraculously healed here tonight before this service is over in this tabernacle. Would you lift your hands, your voices, and your hearts? And would you cry out to the Lord for just a moment? Jesus of Nazareth, I worship you tonight because you are God. I release the gift of faith to these people. I ask, O oh Lord, that angels will minister to the heirs of salvation. That you will impart the gifts of the Spirit in this place tonight. That every preacher will be mightily endowed as never before. I ask that you will anoint these lips of clay and cause me to speak as an oracle of the Lord. We will not fail to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. We ask these things in the matchless, resplendent, or powerful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And everyone said, Amen. The Lord bless you. You may be seated. Would you clap uproariously for the Lord tonight? And would you... Let your voice out with a shout of praise. David said, oh, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. And there is triumph in this house tonight. There is power in this house tonight. And because Jesus is here, anything can happen. Anything is possible in the presence of Jesus. In the second week of November last year, I was in Sydney, Australia, preaching an annual crusade. I've done it for many years. We had an incredible time. There were 15 baptized in Jesus' name over the weekend. There were nine that received the Holy Ghost. There were a number of miracles of healing, and there were some outstanding deliverances. And I am half English, and I am half German. I live on the English side of my personality because I prefer that. When I become angry, I borrow from the German side. It's much more impressive. <laughs> Basically, I am an Englishman. And Sydney, Australia is very British, and I like it. So when the meeting was over, I stayed a couple of days extra to just enjoy some of it. And I'm very fond of the people there and also Brother Slack, the pastor. He is an outstanding man of God. So on Wednesday, he took me to the airport, and we always go early because we have breakfast together, tea, 
or some of the pastries. They have the best pastries because they're made with pure butter. And so in the airport, we were just doing what we always do. And we stopped at this one kiosk, this one area, and the menu was up on the wall. And I asked if they could delete one thing from this particular something I would like to order. And they said yes. And I just tipped my head back farther to look at the very top of the writing of the menu. And that is the last thing I remember. I fell backwards with a massive heart attack. I was dead instantaneously. I did not crumple down, but I just stiffened and fell straight backwards. And the back of my head hit the cement floor. Brother Slack told me, he said, Brother Stone King, people heard it everywhere. He said, people stopped everything and just watched. He fell on his knees beside me on the floor, grabbed a hold of me, and began to pray loudly in my ear, commanding that God would raise me from the dead and that I would be healed. And he would not stop. I want to talk to you tonight about my miracle and living the gospel. When he fell beside me in front of hundreds of people and began to cry out unashamedly in the name of Jesus. People, that is living the gospel. Either we have it or we don't have it. Either this thing works or it doesn't work. Either this is exactly how we read it or it is not. But I'm here tonight to tell you it is real. It is exactly as we have heard it preached that this Jesus can do anything. He can do everything. He can do all things and nothing shall be impossible to them that believe. If you believe that, would you clap again and would you lift your voice of praise to the Lord Jesus of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He cried out to God. There was a policeman that saw me fall. He came running. Brother Slack told me, he said, Brother Stonking, everyone could hear your head hit. He said, it was terrible. He kept, said, I kept praying. He said, the policeman began to administer CPR. There was another policeman that saw it, a younger man. He came running, and together they wanted Brother Slack to help them. But Brother Slack said, no, I'm going to pray. And so he just kept praying out loud. He would not stop praying. An ambulance arrived within six minutes, and there were two men that came. And they began to do resuscitation and more CPR. And there was a paramedic there within just a few minutes. They did CPR. They did resuscitation. And finally they decided, because nothing was working, that they would try electric shock treatments to my heart. And so they shocked me at 200 volts of electricity. Nothing. There was no response at all. So they turned it up to 360 volts of electricity. And nine more times they shocked me. Nothing. Brother Slack told me, he said, Brother Stonking, every time they shocked you, he said, your feet came up off the floor, your head came up off the floor, and then your head would go back and just beat the floor like a jackhammer. And I said, well, why didn't they put something between my head and the floor? <laughs> and he said, well, they're so concerned about just getting your heart beating. They don't worry about some of the minor details. <laughs> But to me, it wasn't minor. And it's no wonder that I had a very serious brain concussion. Nothing medically worked. I was clinically dead for 30 minutes. There was no breath and there was no heartbeat. The slack has told me over the phone. He said, Brother Stone King, you were dead, dead, dead. He said, your body was cold. He said, your face was covered with cold sweat. Your hair was wet with it. Nothing, absolutely nothing they did worked. He said, but I continued to pray. And when they had done everything medically they knew to do, Jesus stepped on the scene. Jesus. And suddenly on my own, without their help, I began to breathe and my heart began to beat. 
And they took me to the hospital. In fact, the driver of the ambulance told me, he came to the hospital a number of times to visit me. He said, in all the years I've done this kind of work, I've never seen anything like you. I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen anyone recover. The doctors in Sydney said I would not live through the week. And that's what they told all of you people when you called. When my sister called, they said, you can come but he will not be alive when you arrive, but come anyway. So she came. The doctor said, even if I regained consciousness, I would be brain dead, not able to speak. There would be no memory. I would be just a vegetable, not able to walk because after six minutes or less with no oxygen to the brain, there is irreparable damage to the brain itself. So you can well imagine that when I regained consciousness and began to ask questions and make a few simple demands, they were in a state of shock. And they are still in a state of shock. They do not know what to do with me. They have no idea what to do with me. Oh. I can feel the faith and the power of God in this house. Would you wave your hands and would you just lift a voice of praise tonight in this place? Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus. I impart the gift of faith to these people in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. So they had me in all kinds of tubes and wires and I kept pulling the tubes and wires out and every time I pull them out they just replace them with bigger ones and it must have irritated me more because I kept yanking them out and I asked brother slack I said brother slack how was I he said you were terrible boy he said you were terrible I said well I don't remember that he said well you wouldn't because they gave you so many drugs. They gave me a lot of drugs to destroy short-term memory so that I could not remember the train, the pain and the trauma of all that I was going through. Brother Jeff Young, a pastor in Bethel Springs, Tennessee, was at my side within three days after I was admitted to the hospital. And he brought a man from his church with him. They came together. And uh, he had seen some of this struggle with the tubes and the wires. And uh, in the morning when they came back, the doctors and nurses came into the room, into my room, and they just boldly declared, because they were exasperated with me, they said, we are going to totally strap him into the bed so he cannot move anything at all. But the young stood to his feet and he said, no, we will not allow you to do that to him. We will sit with him all day long and we will hold him down, and we will pray. And they did so. The doctors looked at them and turned and walked out. And all day long, every time I tried to move, they would grip my arms and hold them down, and they would pray in Jesus' name. They did it all day long, living the gospel. People, I am convinced if we would ever get with the program and turn outward what we have inside, we would shake our nation, we would shake the world, because there is nothing that can compare with us. There is nothing that can compete with us. There is nothing that can compete with what you have a hold of inside of you. If you are a believer here tonight, baptized in Jesus' name, and you are filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It is written of you, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They, believers, shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. They shall recover. They shall recover. It is written. It is written. It is written. 
Do you have that? I want to know. Do you, are you a believer? If you are a believer here tonight, you ought to lift your hands and cry out. You ought to scream out, I am a believer. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name, in my name. And that name is Jesus. There is no name like unto that name. There never has been. There never will be again. I feel like screaming, Jesus. I feel like shouting, Jesus. I want to sing it. I want to clap. I want to leap. I want to shout for joy because I understand that name. I have that name alive. He is alive inside of me. Jesus of Nazareth. Grab the hand of your neighbor. Say, I am a believer. Look back and say, now you know what's wrong with me. Look back and say, it's going to get worse. And it needs to get worse, Sister Trout. It needs to get worse because this is our day. This is our hour. And we have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Yes. Yes. Jesus, at the end of that day, holding me all day long, the people in the church there sometimes stayed till midnight with me. I found these things out later, but the next morning, when Brother Young and Brother Doug came back to the hospital to stay with me, I was sitting up on the side of my bed. And when Brother Young walked in, I said, Brother Young, what are you doing here? It was the first time that I actually realized that he was even there. The doctor came in about that time and he looked at me and he said, this is not the same man I treated last night. Mm. Their prayers had broken the of the drugs and from that moment on, I was restored to normal from that moment on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. And the news spread through the hospital. And someone came in my room and they said, the doctors want to talk with you. I said, fine. So the doctors came in, two of them, and they sat down in chairs at the foot of my bed. And they stared at the floor. And I thought to myself, I felt so badly, I thought, I must not be cooperating, there's something I'm not doing. So I said, gentlemen, I said, I'm very sorry if I'm not cooperating with you. I want to cooperate with you. I said, but I didn't sleep well last night, and I have a headache, and I don't really feel all that well. <laughs> so of an understatement, you know. And one of the doctors looked at me, and he said, Reverend, it has nothing to do with you personally. I said, well, then what does it have to do with he said, medically, you should be dead, but you're not, you're alive, and we don't understand why. Mm. I said, well, let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard of Christ Jesus from Nazareth? And they wouldn't answer. They just kept staring at the floor. So I posed the question again, more emphatically. I said, have either of you ever heard of this man Christ Jesus from Nazareth? The younger doctor looked at me very quickly. They wouldn't look at me in the face. They'd look and look away. He looked and looked away. He said, yes, yes, we've heard of him. I said, so you both admit that you know about him. And they said, yes. I said, well, here's understanding for you. You know about him, but I know him. I know him. I know him.
Those doctors broke down and began to cry. The Holy Ghost swept in that room. I will never forget it. As long as I live, the Holy Ghost came in that place. And from that moment on, they told it everywhere. People came into that room. I don't know where they came from. Nurses came. Doctors came just to look at me. They didn't talk to me. They just came to look at me. And it was sort of strange. I lay there in the bed, and people were just coming to the door, looking, and then going away. Some of them would talk a little. Some of them wanted to hear me talk. And so I would tell them what Jesus had done. And that news began to spread. And then they began to bring more people and more people. And sometimes I really didn't feel like it. I mean, I, I didn't feel like it. But I thought as long as they want to hear, if I perish in this bed, I will tell them what I know about Jesus. And so I kept it up. And you have to understand something here. I looked terrible. My face was swollen. My eyes were swollen because of all the impact of the, my back of my head hitting that cement floor. It forced all the blood to the skin, to the front of my face, and it was black and red and purple. And I looked terrible. But they didn't seem to mind what I looked like. They just wanted to hear what I had to say. Pentecostal, hear me tonight. This world does not care what you look like. They've come to hear what you have to say. We're hung up on a lot of nonsense. We fight over things that don't amount to anything. They don't care what you look like. Look what the, look what the pagans look like. Look what the Muslims look like. Look what the heathens look like. Don't give God a bad time over the simple things from his word. They don't care what you look like. They want to hear what you've got to say. They want to hear what you've got to say. And you've got it. You've got it. You've got it. Do you understand what I'm saying here tonight? You have got it. You've got what the world needs to hear. If you believe that, would you shout with your voice? Would you shout with your voice? Because you believe it, you believe it, and you can feel it in the name of Jesus. This world does not care what we look like. They want to hear, what has he done for you? Is he real? Does he live? Can he heal? Can he help me? Can he set me free? The answer is yes, 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 yes. He is a deliverer. He is a healer. He is a savior. He can do anything, everything. Yes. Oh. I feel like clapping again. I feel the joy of the Lord in this house. There's revelation here. There is understanding. After 14 days, I was released from the hospital in Sydney, Australia. I stayed with wonderful friends in the church for six days longer to make sure I would be able to travel. This is very interesting, I think. Many preachers have called me in the last three or four months, from all over the world, actually. And several of them have asked me a question. Brother Stone King, when you were dead, did you see anything? <laughs> and my answer has always been the same. No, 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 no. Jesus would never torment me like that. He knows me too well. If I had seen Jesus, folks, personally and talked to him, if I'd have seen the holy city or angels, there is no way I would have come back here. There is no way I would have come back here. I would have pushed to go there. There's no way I would have come back here. And he knew that about me. But the slack took me back to the airport again. We bypassed that restaurant where it all happened. As we walked by, the girls, the people who had worked there, saw me and remembered, and they broke down and began to cry. 
Many of them have promised to come hear me preach when I'm there in November this year, including some of the doctors. <laughs> I flew from there 30 hours straight through from Sydney to Memphis, Tennessee. Got there, and they took me to the hospital. Um, but the young son is a heart specialist, he's a doctor. And so I went there, stayed overnight with them, and they took me to the hospital the next day. Dr. Weiner is a heart specialist, he's a brilliant Jewish doctor. And I was on the operating room table, and he said to me, he said, Reverend, we can't do anything for your heart because of brain concussion. He said, your skull is cracked badly. He said, there are large pools of blood on the brain. And I had seen the x-rays, I knew it was true. I said, well, we'll pray. So we prayed. They took another set of pictures. The doctor, the doctor came back in that room, shaking his head. He said, you are the most unusual patient we have ever had in this hospital. He said, this makes no sense at all. I said, what do you mean? He said, there is no crack in the skull. There is no blood seepage in the brain. He said, there is no evidence that you've even had a brain concussion. He said, if we didn't have the x-rays and the photos from Australia, he said, we would believe they had misdiagnosed you. But we can't deny the photographs that we have. It was a second miracle. Because between their prognosis and the second set of photos, the Holy Ghost got in there and just fixed everything up. And he's here to do that for you tonight. They also told me that there was a very real possibility that I would lose some of my vision and possibly even be blind because the tremendous trauma and the impact of all the beating of my head on that cement floor, that it's not unusual that the retinas in both eyes are seriously damaged. So I, when I got home, I went to my eye doctor and I told him the whole story. He was nearly converted before I got done. He just sat there and shook his head. And he said, I'm not even going to charge you for this. He said, I've never heard a story like this. So he examined my eyes and he came back and he said, there is absolutely no damage at all to the retinas of your eyes. There is nothing. They are all normal. Dr. Young told me that it takes at least six months for the muscles of the heart to even begin to function normally after an attack like you've had. He said, but from the moment you regain consciousness, he said, they began to function totally normally. He said, it is as if you never had a heart attack. The doctors told me, they said, you have defied all the laws of medical science. I said, I didn't, but I know the one who did. And I know the one who did. His name is... Jesus. Say it again. Jesus. And again. Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Blessed be the name of Jesus forever. I am listed as a miracle patient in both hospitals in America and in Sydney. You know what's, what's amazing to me about it all and very wonderful for me is that in spite of everything that happened and all the prognosis and the diagnosis and all the medical expertise, information that was given and all the things that were foretold, so to speak, medically, I never had one second of fear. I never had a second of fear. Why should I? I mean, why should I? I mean, isn't this what we preach? Isn't, the, isn't this what we've told people who come and receive the Holy Ghost? Isn't this what we tell people? That it's better 
to go to be with him than to be here? I never had a second to fear. Why should I? I've lived for him for 41 years. I've had the Holy Ghost 41 years. I've traveled much of the world. I've prayed for people who were dead and they were raised to life again. I've seen thousands receive the Holy Ghost. I've seen legs grow in services where blind eyes have opened, deaf ears have heard, tumors have disappeared, cysts have disappeared. I've seen all kinds of things. I've done the things that most people read about in storybooks. I have wonderful, wonderful friends, the best friends in the whole world. I have had a wonderful, wonderful life. I'm one of those rare, unique, distinct individuals. I have it made, and I have the good sense to know it. Some people don't know it. If you've got the Holy Ghost here tonight, if you're baptized in Jesus' name, you've got it made. You have got it made because you get the boast, the best of both worlds. I've got the best of this world and the best of the one to come. It's going to be a wonderful day when we see him in the clouds of glory. It will be worth it all when we see Jesus on that day. Mm. I never knew one second to fear. In March, I went back to the hospital. I was in that area preaching a crusade uh, for the youngs. And at the end of that, I checked back to the hospital just to have them look and see how everything was going because they wanted to see me. Dr. Weiner wanted to see me. So I went in and um, I was on the operating room table and you're totally awake when they do this. So he did whatever he wanted to do. And uh, then he said to me, he said, I'm going to go into the right side of the heart and I'm going to check the muscle where the heart attack actually hit. I want to see how that muscle is doing. I said, fine. There was a big monitor here and so you can watch what they do. Some of it doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but I watched as much as I could and he was doing all of this and all of a sudden, he just stopped and stared straight ahead. After a few seconds, he turned and walked around that glass partition and came right over to the operating room table and looked down at me and he said, the Lord is with you. I said, what do you mean? He said, that muscle has totally, totally recovered. It's as if you never had a heart attack. That does not happen medically. That does not happen. And they know that doesn't happen because it can't happen. They have no choice at this point but to admit that there is a divine intervention that has come from God that exceeds their medical expertise and all of their training and knowledge. I have done a lot of phone work. I've called a lot of people. I've done a lot of talking to doctors, to people in Australia and also here. And I am convinced, I am persuaded that Jesus purposely left me dead for 30 minutes because he totally broke all the laws of medical science. He defied all the laws of medical science. I believe he did it purposely. And you know what else I believe about it? I believe he allowed it to happen to me so that I would understand that the Jesus I read about in that book is just as alive today and just as able today as he was 2,000 years ago. That he has not changed. That this is not some story, but this is reality. He is real. He can cause the lame to walk, the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the dead to be raised to life again. He can take away cancer. He can cause legs to grow. He can change your mind. He can cause your body to be made whole. <clears throat> you may be seated. Not only did he allow it to happen to me, to convince me, 
He has allowed it to happen to convince us as a people that he wants to do among us the supernatural, the miraculous. And that revelation is hanging in the air above your heads. It's like a magnet. If you believe that I'm telling you the truth and that that presence is here and that revelation is here, if you will throw your hands into the air right now and cry out the name of Jesus, it will fall on you. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. The gift of faith is in the atmosphere in this tabernacle tonight. The gift of faith is wanting to become the personal possession of every preacher in this house. If you believe that and if you want that, if you will stand and lift your hands and begin to cry out to God, that gift will come to you. And your ministry will absolutely be elevated and lifted to a realm that you have never known before. You can feel it. You can feel it being transmitted in the name of Jesus. Don't worry what your neighbor is hearing. Don't worry what your neighbor is thinking. If you will let your voice out, if you will let your voice out, if you will claim it, you will leave this place totally changed by the authority of the word of God by the power of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth What I'm asking now is, did you get it? Did you get it? Did you get it? Can you feel it? If you got it, if you can feel it, you ought to act like it for just a moment. Don't worry about your neighbor. Don't worry what anybody else is thinking. We've come here not to just have another service, not to just have another camp meeting. We've got to be get beyond traditional Pentecostalism. Traditional Pentecostalism is not getting the job done. We're going to have to become apostolic Pentecostals. Apostolic Pentecostals. I mean by that signs, wonders, and miracles. This Jesus can still heal. He can still deliver. You've got it. If you've got the Holy Ghost, if you've got the name of Jesus in your life, there is nothing he will not do for you. He is still able. He is still able. He is powerful in this house tonight. Yes. Such as I have in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus. 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 If you're a minister here tonight, if you're a man of God, I want you to turn to somebody and get a hold of them and say, In the name of Jesus, such as I have. When you do it, the power of God's going to go through you. It's going to go through you to someone else. The healing virtue of God is right there, brother. Try, you can feel it. In the name of Jesus. That's it, Brother Klein Dance. That's it. That's it. Such as I have. Such as I have. Such as I have. Hallelujah. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. That's it.
If you are here tonight, if you've got a heart problem, if you've got a heart problem, if you will lift your hands and begin to worship God, you will be healed instantaneously. Many people in the last few months have been healed of all kinds of heart disease. Believe it, believe it, believe it. Reach out to somebody else. Push someone out of the way if you're a believer. Push someone out of the way if you're a believer. Get a hold of somebody. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, in my name. That's it, Brother Glass. That's it. That's it. That's it. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Yes, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. We agree together. We agree together. The gift of faith will go to every preacher in this house. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we agree together, we agree together for apostolic revival. In the name of Jesus, such as I have This man has just gotten up out of a wheelchair. Would you lift your hands and worship the Lord? Jesus is in this house. Where Jesus is, anything can happen. Anything can happen. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name. That's it, son. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Never to be the same. Never to be the same. Such as I have. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. That's it, boy. That's it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Of Jesus.
if God has healed you, would you put your hand in the air and just wave it? Would you just put your hand in the air and wave it? In thanksgiving, let your voice be raised to him in thanksgiving. People, we cannot be the same. We cannot be the same. We cannot be the same. Hallelujah! In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that's it, that's it, such as I have, that's it, that's it, by the authority of the word of God, by the power of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that's it, receive it, receive it, receive it, that's it, you got it, boy, you got it, you got it! One more time, if you're a believer, reach over to someone, take him by the hand and command in Jesus' name. People are being healed. People are being delivered. People are receiving the Holy Ghost in this place tonight. There's tremendous deliverance in this house. And there is a transmittal of apostolic authority and power coming upon preachers and their wives in this house. May you never be the same in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the authority of the Word of God, by the power of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive it! Receive! 
receive it. Receive it. Jesus in Jesus' name. Yes. If you are here tonight and you need any kind of a miracle, you need any kind of healing in your body, if you will just throw both hands in the air and begin to worship God, that healing will fall upon you instantaneously. In the name of Jesus, the gift of faith is here. The gift of faith is in this house. The gift of faith is being transmitted to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth.
Jesus of Nazareth, in the name of Jesus. My back is bending to this side. This lady right here walked from the back of the tabernacle tonight out of a wheelchair. She's up at the front. She walked. Would you lift your hands and worship God? Don't talk about current events. Don't talk about stuff. Just worship Jesus in this house. He is in this house, and he's not done. He's not done. If you can find the grace. I know you're tired. You've been in church all week. But if you will just lift your hands, prop your elbow up, and begin to thank him for what he's doing, you will never be the same. You will never be the same. This whole district can be transformed. Something is being born here the night that will never die. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, in the name of How many of you honestly feel that you have touched something here tonight in the spirit? That you've touched a new realm, a new dimension? Now, God told Abraham, God told Abraham, he said, I will give you all the land you walk upon, but you must possess it. In other words, it's not enough to come here and walk on it. You're going to have to possess it. If you feel that God has done something for you tonight in revelation, understanding, and the gifts of the Spirit, I want you to throw your hands in the air and possess it. I want you to possess it because you've got to possess it, not just walk on it, but possess it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, by the authority of the Word of God, by the power of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, can you hear me? I want you to look right at me. The Spirit of the Lord is here to heal terminal illnesses. The Spirit of God is here to heal terminal illnesses. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I rebuke the fear of cancer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the authority of the Word of God. By the power of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I rebuke the fear of cancer in your body in the name of Jesus. Receive it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Just as easy as you feel it. Just as easy as you feel it. You've got it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I rebuke cancer itself in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus. If you feel free of that fear, would you simply just worship the Lord and let your voice out? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Utokala haraka raka rashata. Utokala haraka raka rashata. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There are a number of people here tonight, both men and women, who have had some very traumatic mental battles. You have not told anyone about this, but it has wearied you and it has exhausted you. Don't be ashamed here tonight. Don't be afraid. 
You are my brother. You are my sister. We are here to help each other. If I'm talking to you tonight, boldly, would you lift your hands and begin to worship God and your mind will clear instantaneously. The devil is a liar. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jesus. Hallelujah. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Otokolashata. Otokolotorokatakashata. Otokolotoroka. That's it. In the name of Jesus. That's it. That's it. That's it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. on that man right there in the name of Jesus of Nazareth in the name of Jesus of Nazareth in the name of Jesus